So I have a confession to make. I don't love bone marrow. I've ordered it at some fancy restaurants before. I have made it myself multiple times. It is a nutrient powerhouse. It is filled with iron, which is something that I really need. And I've tried really hard to enjoy it just as a roasted bone marrow. And I don't love it. It tastes like eating globby, oily fat to me. Until I discovered this simple trick that transforms the globby, oily bone marrow into this whipped, thick, almost buttercream frosting texture. I actually discovered it a few years ago when I was trying to feed Levi some first foods when he was a baby. We discovered very quickly that he was very allergic to eggs, and with all of my other kids, eggs had been a primary first food. And so I was looking for something super nutritious to feed him, and I started feeding him bone marrow. And he liked it no matter how I made it. But one day I was just trying to get it blended up so it was a little bit more smooth and not globby. And I was using my immersion blender and I added in some broth because I thought I would extend it a little bit by adding some broth and making it a little thinner. And it transformed into this miraculously beautiful, creamy, whipped butter frosting type texture. And he would eat it like by the spoonful. He loved it. After it got hard in the fridge, I would just scoop out little droplets of it and put it on his tray for him. And he would just eat them up like they were candy. After I had my little discovery with the bone marrow, of course I had to Google it to see if others had done it. And I haven't found anyone that does it exactly the same as I do, but there are lots of recipes out there for whipped bone marrow and using it as a spread on like crostini bread and all kinds of different things. But the techniques used in the other videos they didn't quite give the same texture to the bone marrow that I got using my original technique. So that's what I'm going to share with you today. But then you can also Google around for whipped bone marrow recipes and you'll find all kinds of other ways to do it. First off, I'm going to roast my marrow bones. These are the ones that I am using. Um, I don't know exactly what kind of bones these are, but when you go to the butcher, you can ask for marrow bones. Femur bones are a common one um, that has lots of marrow. The bag I have here is 30 ounces, so almost two pounds, and these are frozen. I just cook them straight from frozen. It just reduces the steps. I don't have to think to take it out to defrost ahead of time, and they cook really easily from frozen. If you do cook them from fresh or from defrosted, the cooking time will probably be just a little bit less. So my oven is already preheated to 425. You can see that big center area there of all that nice soft marrow. That is what you're looking for. I'm just gonna layer these in my roasting pan, just like this. And I'm not seasoning them at this point because lots of seasoning will be uh, blended in later. So I don't even need to worry about that. I'm gonna throw this in my 425 degree oven for about 25 to 30 minutes. You just want to make sure that the marrow gets up to about 145 degrees. And when cooking from frozen, 25 to 30 minutes is plenty. If you're cooking them from defrosted, I mean, I'd probably start checking them at 15 to 20 minutes. The bones are done, and this is what they look like. It took the full 30 minutes. Uh, this big bone here on the side, no, this one right here, <laughs> it took longer than the other ones to come up to temp just because it was bigger, so that's why... Um, Checking with a quick read thermometer is a great choice. So you can see I'm well past 145 there. So that's perfect. You'll notice that I didn't line my pan with parchment paper or with um, foil. And that's because I'm gonna be using all of the fat that has dripped down and I want to be able to scrape the bottom really effectively. And foil's just gonna rip Parchment paper is probably, might work, but I just think it's easiest to keep the pan unlined. So what I'm gonna do now is just let these sit here and cool until they're cool enough to handle. They probably won't be completely room temperature. They'll still be a little bit warm, uh, but just cool enough that I'm able to handle them and scoop out the marrow. So the other day I made this with only smoked salt as the seasoning. 
It was phenomenal, tasted great. I'm gonna get a little bit more fancy this time and I'm gonna do some chopped rosemary and some lemon zest. I will also be adding some regular Redmond salt. The sky's the limit on flavorings for this. If I wasn't avoiding garlic right now, I would probably add some garlic to this. Like I said, anything that you would use in a compound butter would be amazing in this whipped marrow frosting. It has been about 20 minutes and I'm gonna go ahead and brave these. I just use a butter knife that's pretty easy. I don't wanna lose any of the good fat. Keep that down in the bottom of the pan. And then I am just going to scoop the marrow out into my jar. Boom. And of course, you're gonna wanna save these bones and make bone broth out of them, or give them to your dog or some such thing. Do not just throw them away because there's all kinds of nutrition left in them for sure. Now I'm gonna get all the last bits of goodness out of the pan, pour them in, because you're not even gonna waste that oil at the bottom, that grease. It's gonna get whipped up and be delicious marrow frosting. I'm gonna go ahead and add my seasonings and my salt right now. I think I'm just gonna do a half teaspoon of salt, well, maybe a quarter teaspoon of salt can always add more later if I need to. And it doesn't look like very much in there right now. And man, doesn't that look appetizing? Um, but it actually whips up to be a fair amount. So it will, it will expand. I'm gonna go ahead and add in my lemon zest and my rosemary. I probably have a tablespoon. I'm not gonna add all the rosemary, I think. I'm just gonna add about a tablespoon because I have a little bit more than that in here. Just don't want it to be too much. But I did want the rosemary to get chopped up a little more with the immersion blender, so I am adding it in now. You can always mix in spices afterwards as well. I'm just gonna go ahead and give this a quick blend with the immersion blender. It's starting to look kind of like gravy or something, so starting to look a little more appetizing. All right, now for the fun part. The last ingredient you're gonna need is ice cubes. And I'm not going to say how many because you just add them one at a time until the mixture is uh, cool enough to start fluffing as you're mixing. So we're just going to do one at a time and it can vary. It depends on how hot your starting mixture is and that will just determine how many ice cubes you need to get to the right temperature. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start it mixing and then I'm going to throw in ice cubes one at a time until I see my mixture turning white and fluffing, very similar to the way you make mayonnaise. Like if you were gonna emulsify mayonnaise, it kind of is that same type of thing where it starts out oily and greasy and it turns into like a nice fluffy consistency. Oh, I'm gonna put the ice cube underneath my mixer. You can see it already starting to lighten up. I'm going to throw in one more. I think it'll only take two. So you can see how thick it is at this point. It's very, very creamy. Don't want to waste even a little bit of it, so I'm trying to get it all out. I like using these tall jars for the immersion blender, but they are somewhat annoying to get everything out of because I don't want to waste any of this delicious goodness. So right now it's colder than it would be at room temperature because it's still cold from the ice. If I let it sit for a while, it will soften up and I will show you that in a minute. 
Another thing you can do at this point, um, if you wanna just whip it up really fluffy, you can put it in the KitchenAid mixer or anything with a whisk attachment and just whip it up like you would do whipped butter. This is the batch that I made the other day with just the smoked salt and you can see it's kinda like really cold butter but um, you can leave it out at room temperature, it'll soften up. You can also just plop it on top of a hot steak and that will soften it up just like you would melt butter on something. There are just so many different ways that you could use this. I'm really excited to be experimenting with some of them um, and I will give you some ideas here at the end of the video. So this is what it looks like, all creamy and at room temperature. As far as how to eat this, it's delicious on top of a steak, just like you would put a blob of compound butter on your steak. Put a dollop of this and it'll kind of melt and oh my gosh, the flavor is so incredible. You can also use it as a spread like on your egg white bread or if you make some egg white bagels or uh, my butter bun recipe, it's so delicious on that. But let me show you real quick what my absolute favorite way to eat this is carnivore crisps. These make the perfect chip for dipping in a fatty dip especially. I love the leaner versions like the chicken breast or the pork loin. They're leaner and they just make the absolute perfect chip for dipping. Like look at how thin and crispy that is and you can just get a nice big scoop. I've just got to go ahead and taste this here. The rosemary and the lemon work so well with the fatty marrow butter. It's just absolutely delicious. So that is my fluffy marrow frosting technique. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please tell me down below your ideas for different flavorings and seasonings to put in here. I would love to hear if you have a favorite compound butter what seasonings are in it because I am definitely going to be experimenting with more flavors. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you again in the next video.